Hi everyone, I'm Meredith Abbott, Culinary Director for Sir La Table, and welcome to On the Table. Today I'm going to be making a butternut squash and manchego crostini. Beautiful recipe for any get together, appetizers, or any meal. To get started, I have already diced one half of a butternut squash, ready to go, in a nice big bowl. Next, I'm going to slice a half of a yellow onion. So take my knife, again, fingertips always down, holding whatever you're dicing, and just make some even, about quarter inch thick slices. Using my bench scraper, I'm going to add this to my bowl. I'm going to add enough olive oil just to coat all of the butternut squash in the onions. A nice big three finger pinch of salt, a pinch of black pepper, my chopped garlic, and a pinch of red pepper flakes. Toss this up. You can use your fingers. I like to use my silicone spatula. Spread it out nice and kind of evenly so that airflow in the oven can really touch all sides of that squash and onions. And into the oven it goes. My vegetables are roasting in the oven and now it's time to prep the bread for the crostini. So I have a large baguette. I'm going to cut it on the bias, which means at a slight diagonal. And so about a quarter inch to a half inch thick Start making your slices. Lay it out onto a parchment lined baking sheet. And now I just simply want to oil these with some olive oil. I just like to use a pastry brush for this. And you're just going to paint the top of the bread slices. Try to cover the whole surface of the bread with your oil for even coverage, even toastiness. Now that these are brushed, they're gonna go into a preheated oven until they're nice and golden and crispy. My squash and onion mixture is out of the oven and cooled enough so I can touch it. Now it's time to puree. So I have my nice big food processor here. I'm going to add my heavy cream and my cider vinegar. Acid in the vinegar is really gonna help brighten all of these flavors up. I'm going to just pulse this until it really starts to come together into a nice puree. Once it starts pureeing and breaking down, I'm gonna take the lid off and I'm actually going to scrape down the sides just to make sure that those blades are catching all of this mixture. It's not totally smooth yet, but at this point, I'm now going to adjust the seasoning with salt. And because I love black pepper, I'm gonna add some freshly cracked black pepper. All right, all set. Now it's time for the fun part of frying some sage. I have butter, a stainless steel skillet, my wash and dried sage leaves. So I'm gonna preheat my skillet, about medium heat. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon or so of butter. I'm gonna let the butter melt. It's going to foam, and then once that foaming stops, that's when I'm going to add that sage in. And just put as many sage leaves in that fit comfortably. This is a smaller skillet, so I'm gonna put in, oh, maybe five, but if you had a larger skillet, you could put all 12. You'll see that the sage is getting kind of bubbly. It's curled a little bit. Flip over. Once they've kind of puffed up, we kind of want to fry both sides. We're just shallow frying these. You'll fry these until the color goes from this kind of natural dusty green sage color to a deeper, richer green. Okay, sage is crispy. I'm gonna pull them out onto a paper towel lined plate just to, to drain off any of that excess butter and that will also finish that kind of crisping process. Okay, so going to just rub a cut 
piece of garlic onto each little crostini is going to add a nice delicate garlic flavor without being too overpowering. And now it's time to top with the puree. I love to use an offset spatula for this job because I can not only scoop up, but it also works great for spreading and getting all those beautiful like, little swoops. So you're gonna add just enough to cover the top of the crostini. So maybe about a tablespoon or so, just depending on how big your bread slices are. And now the fun part, finishing with the cheese, the fried sage, honey, and a sprinkle of flaky salt. Instead of laying this whole sage leaf down over top of the crostini, I'm going to just kind of break off some pieces and sprinkle it over. And now for the honey. And then for the finale, it's beautiful flaky sea salt just over top. So each piece gets a few sprinkles of that salt. And there you go. Your butternut squash and manchego crostini. Perfect for any occasion.